All right, in this video, we are going to do goniometry and manual muscle testing for cervical rotation. So we're gonna start off with goniometry. So cervical rotation happens in the transverse plane. The end feel is firm. So the end feel for all of our cervical motions is firm. Flexion, extension, side bending, rotation, it's all firm. The normal value is zero to 80 to each direction. So normal value for right rotation is zero to 80. Normal value for left rotation is also zero to 80. So the patient position is sitting in a wooden chair, back supported, feet supported, and the clinician is going to be standing on a stool behind the patient so that I can look down at the patient as I'm doing my measurements. Okay, so the fulcrum, and I'm not there yet, but the fulcrum is gonna be placed at the center of the cranial aspect of the head. And I know that the stationary arm is going to be parallel to the line that connects the two acromion processes. So I have to orient myself to that first. So what I've done is I have placed the legs of the chair along one of the black lines in the floor in hopes that this helps me. And I'll explain in just a minute. So I'm gonna palpate the acromion processes. So first I palpate the spine of the scapulas and I come around until it they kind of turn that corner a little bit. Now I'm on the lateral edge of both of her acromion processes and I'm looking straight down at her and I'm imagining an imaginary line that connects my fingers. So an imaginary line that connects the two acromion processes, but I'm not gonna be able to keep my fingers here through this entire measurement. So I, I use a little hack, I guess we'll call it, where I compare this line between my two fingers with the lines on the floor and most of the time they are parallel to each other and sometimes they're off a little bit, which is fine. It just means that when I set up my stationary arm, the stationary arm needs to be parallel to either the black line on the floor or have the same relationship that my original acromial line had, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna hold my goniometer like this. This is the starting, actually this is the starting position um, it doesn't matter if your stationary arm is going over her right shoulder or, or her left shoulder. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to give her the cues. So I'm going to have you turn and look over your right shoulder as far as you can go. After she's moved, I place my fulcrum over the center aspect of the cranial aspect of her head. I don't have this touching her head. I'm not pressing into her head. I'm giving a little space here. After my fulcrum is in place, I'm going to line up my stationary arm with the black line on the floor. Luckily for me, your acromial line was parallel with the black line on the floor. Her nose was out here, that's why that's my starting position. And then I bring this over so that it is in line with the tip of her nose. And then I read, because she started up here at zero, so the red numbers, she's at 65 for right rotation. And I can keep my goniometer set up just like this in order to do left rotation. I can still keep the stationary arm over her right shoulder. It doesn't need to switch. So now I'm gonna have you look over your left shoulder as far as you can. So again, that's where she started. Her nose was straight ahead. And I still make sure my fulcrum's over the center aspect of the head. I double check to make sure my stationary arm is parallel to that black line on the floor. And I bring this right over the tip of her nose. And she has a little bit more to the left. Take a little break. And so I'm measuring from zero and she's getting about 74 to the left. Common compensation that you might see, if someone has limited left rotation of her cervical spine, she might start to rotate the rest of her trunk. So I would say, hold on a second, you're rotating your trunk. And I put my hands at her shoulders, maybe anteriorly on the right, posterior on the left to prevent that extra motion from happening. Okay, we're gonna move on to MMT. So I'm gonna have you lie on your back on this table, please. So the standard starting position for MMT for cervical rotation is supine with her head turned all the way to one side. So I'm gonna have you turn and look over your right shoulder as far as you can. I haven't started the test yet. This is the starting position because a grade three is movement against gravity. So she has to start fully right side, fully right rotated in order to left rotate against gravity. So I'm gonna have you turn so that your eyes and nose are pointed up to the ceiling. So she just performed left cervical rotation against gravity. And so that's her grade three. 
And so now I'm gonna do grades four and five. With grades four and five, we're always trying to push the body part back to where it started. So I'm gonna try to turn your head back to the right and you are not gonna let me do it. Stay right where you are, stay strong. I have one hand right over in front of the ear and the side of the head. That's my resistance hand. My stabilization hand is on the lateral side of the contralateral shoulder. And what I'm doing with my resistance hand is I'm pronating my forearm. I'm not, I'm gonna pick your head up for a quick second. I'm not, you can relax now. I'm not using the heel of my hand like this because that would cause side bending. I am trying to rotate because this motion happens in the transverse plane. My resistance hand has to happen in the transverse plane as well. So let's start again because I've been talking a lot. Okay, so turn and look all the way over your right shoulder. That's the starting position. Grade three, which is against gravity. Now we're testing left rotation. Great, stay right there. I'm gonna try to push your head back to the right. Don't let me do it, stay strong. Resistance, stabilization, don't let me turn you, don't let me turn you. Good. Sometimes you're gonna have someone who, instead of staying still and resisting you trying to turn them, they're gonna to try to turn their head into your hand. And so you would just say, oh, hold on. Don't try to push me away, just try to stay still and don't let me push you. Those are two very different things. So now we were gonna test right rotation, the strength of her right rotation. We would have her turn all the way to the left. And I'm gonna have you turn back up toward the ceiling. That's her grade three. I'm gonna to try to push you back toward where you came from. Don't let me do it, stay strong. Stabilization on the lateral side of the shoulder. Resistance hand right above the, the ear and the side of the head. Don't let me turn you, stay strong, stay strong. Good, so that was my four and my five. If she was only able to come up, so let's say that she's back in her starting position all the way turned, and she could only come up through her partial range, we would call that a grade two. But there's another way to test for a grade two. But before you go anywhere, I wanna make sure I'm not missing any notes that I really wanna point out to you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna have you come back to this wooden chair. So a grade two is either partial range against gravity or full range gravity eliminated. So if we have the patient back in a sitting position and she rotates her cervical spine, that's rotation gravity eliminated. So yeah, I would just say, can you turn your head toward me as far as you can? Good, and then back to the center. So that's a grade two for right rotation because she went through her full available range, um, gravity eliminated. And then to the left and then back to straight. So this is what we were talking about in lab. I just did her goniometry in this exact same position. So I know she can move through her full available range, gravity eliminated. It's almost impossible to get a one or a zero um, in rotation because you have to measure goniometry first. You have to measure their active range of motion first. And unless someone didn't move at all during your, your goniometric testing, they're gonna earn a grade two. Um, technically, if you were gonna assess for a one or a zero, you would palpate the sternocleidomastoids and I would ask her to turn or rotate. And if she actually couldn't do it, um, and I felt something would be a one, nothing would be a zero. Oh, there is one other thing I wanted to point out. Can you hop back on the table for me? There's one other thing I wanted to point out. Okay, so in a comp test situation, you can do it the way I just demonstrated it, which is where you separate, testing the left rotation from the right. So the separation would be, okay, I'm testing left rotation first. So look up toward the ceiling. That's the grade three. Here's the grade four and five, right? And then I move on to right rotation. That's where we separate it. It is possible for you to mix up the three, fours and fives by saying, all right, I'm gonna have you turn all the way to the right and then all the way to the left. So she did from here to here, she did her grade three and then she kept going just to get into her starting position for right rotation and then back up to the ceiling. So she just did grade three for right and left. And then you could do, don't let me turn you to the right, stay strong, stay strong. Don't let me turn you to the left, stay strong, stay strong. But if you choose to use that method in a comp test, be prepared for your proctor to say, oh, okay, you're about to push. Which side are you testing? You still have to know that this is testing left cervical rotation strength and that this is testing right cervical rotation strength.